Hello everyone, my name is Mark Ditsworth and I am a senior data engineer at Capital One. My team operates a petabyte scale Elasticsearch based data lake, and running Elasticsearch at such a scale in AWS presents a lot of challenges in adhering to cloud best practices. So today, I'm going to talk about an automated system we developed internally to facilitate our compliance with our requirement to regularly rehydrate our EC2s. First, I'm going to give a bit of background on why an automated rehydration service was even necessary for us. Next, I'll describe the operation of the service. Then, I will touch on the problems we faced and the benefits we have seen from its implementation. So first, for the background. As I mentioned earlier, our Elasticsearch environment is quite large. Here you can see the indications of the scale at which we operate, and some of the constraints we work under. I've used the term rehydration. If you are unfamiliar, in this context, that essentially means spinning up a new Elasticsearch node to replace one that's running an out-of-date machine image. So given the scale of our Elasticsearch environment, it's pretty clear that this is an intensive process. Even with tools like Ansible, manually running a playbook to perform a rehydration takes one or two engineers nearly two weeks to completely rehydrate our clusters in a way that minimizes risk to production. To solve this problem, we built an automated service to perform these rehydrations of the instances with AMIs that exceed the allowable age. The first component to the rehydration service is a short script deployed to all our EC2s. It runs on a daily cron, checking if its host's AMI has aged beyond the allowable limit. If so, the host's instance ID is sent to an SQS queue. Essentially, the functionality here is whenever an EC2's AMI reaches the age limit, it puts in a request to be rehydrated. The second component to the rehydration service is an EC2 that we call the Rehydratenator. Each night, it checks the rehydration requests that are in the SQS queue, in addition to our desire to limit each cluster to only one rehydration at a time. Then, it launches a containerized application for each approved request. Inside each container, the application pulls down the latest keys, passwords, and certs from our credential repository, clones our GitHub repository to access our up-to-date Ansible automation, it determines the type of Elasticsearch node running on the target EC2, and runs the corresponding automation to perform the rehydration. When all of the applications have finished, a validation script runs to ensure that each instance for which a container was launched has in fact been terminated. If it hasn't, that indicates a failed rehydration and we get alerted on it. The problems we faced in rolling this out mainly centered around timing. With the amount of data we house on each node, excluding a data node from the cluster takes several hours, but is not consistent each time. Early on, we faced issues with shard relocation frequently exceeding our defined timeout limit and prematurely ending the rehydration process. If hardware provisioning takes an abnormally long time, which has been known to happen, the validation script would run before the rehydration process would have a chance to finish, thereby creating a false alert. We have also noticed a small error rate with hardware provisioning, independent of our Elasticsearch installation and configuration automation. It took us a few weeks of adjusting the timing of the components within the service to strike a balance between the total number of rehydrations per night and achieving an error rate we were comfortable with. But even with one or two failed rehydrations per week, we have seen significant benefits. The main benefit is our time saved. Those two weeks of boring, tedious work can be replaced with more meaningful development. The rehydrations run at night when indexing rates are lowest and there are no ongoing production changes that could potentially conflict and cause issues. Containerization means next to no local dependencies on the rehydratenator itself, keeping its upkeep and maintenance easy. And the cost of one additional R5 instance is nothing compared to what we already spend. Furthermore, we now have a painless method for rolling out other non-urgent changes. So for things like upgrading Java, that can be accomplished passively as part of this rolling rehydration process. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I hope you got some value out of this quick chat, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.